Did you know AgriPulse has all your favorite podcasts, including Open Mic, Newsmakers, and Drive Time. Take us wherever you go. Subscribe at agripulse.com or on Spotify, Google Play, or Apple Podcasts. Welcome back to Meet the Lawmaker. We are joined this week with Representative Mark Molinaro, representing the 19th District of New York. And Representative, tell me a little bit more about your district and the kinds of agriculture that are in it. Sure, so I actually spent most of my adult life uh, in public service in rural upstate New York. Uh, and agriculture remains the largest uh, industry in the 19th Congressional District. We stretch from Massachusetts uh, all the way to Ithaca, New York. So it's, it's a very rural district. Uh, uh, mostly uh, small dairy farms and specialty crops, uh, fruits and, and vegetables. Of course, uh, we represent, uh, I represent Cortland County, the home of the Cortland Apple. Uh, but, uh, uh, but, but as I said, agriculture is the largest industry uh, in, uh, in the district. And when you combine it with agritourism, uh, it's among the largest industries in the state of New York. And, and frankly, it, it, is the, it is the driver behind most of our economy. We're the breadbasket, uh, if you will, of New York State. And uh, uh, frankly, our farmers uh, uh, work hard, produce a lot and struggle too. So you mentioned that you, you first entered public service when you were 18 years old yeah. um, and since then you have served as a mayor, a state assemblyman, and a county executive. So how did these local roles um, in public service help prepare you for your current role in office in the House of Representatives? Sure, I, I've had the, the real honor of uh, serving uh, and, uh, and, and, and sort of governing every day of my adult life. But when you serve in local government, uh, you learn early on that the decisions you make have real impacts on real people, and you become the point of contact. And and the important thing about uh, about local government, it's it's the place where uh, residents still sort of trust their government. And so when you're at that level uh, and, and you're you're in the community, you know you're working with people hand hand in hand. You're building coalitions uh, uh, to to pave streets and and, and repair parks, but also uh, to, to to build economies and to to respond to social needs. And and so that that work at the local level really informed me. It's the foundation uh, uh, that I use uh, to make decisions now. And and I learned then, you know, very importantly, uh, that when the roof leaks, it leaks on Republicans and Democrats. And the job of government is simply to fix the roof. And so. So, uh, but, but having served in, in Little Village government as a mayor, a role that I, I cherished, state legislature, we had to take on a statewide policy and really push back against policies that make it harder for farmers and farming in upstate New York. But then as county executive uh, of uh, Dutchess County, you know, we, we built uh, an entire agriculture policy meant to revitalize uh, uh, farming in, in Dutch. When I started uh, as county executive, uh, they were ready to, to write the obituary for farming uh, in the Hudson River Valley. And when I left, we had more active farmland uh, in Dutchess than we did in the 1970s. Uh, and we're uh, among, uh, I think we're the, 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 uh, uh, the, the, the largest number of equine uh, farms uh, in the state, except uh, for one small pocket of New York uh, during racing season. Uh, and you probably know what those are, Sar that, that is Saratoga. But, but we just, we, we grew the economy around agriculture and agritourism uh, and all of those local uh, responsibilities, hand in hand solving problems, prepared me, I hope and think, very well to serve now uh, in Congress. So then what made you want to run for Congress? Yeah, I, you know, I, I, as I, I've served at, at the local and state level, and I really felt that there was a need to have a you know, common sense upstate New York voice in Congress, and that my experience in local government and, and working with small businesses and farmers and families all across upstate New York would really uh, be of benefit to the district and the, and the communities I would represent, but also really in, in, informative and helpful to, to Congress to, to, to establish a federal policy that's respectful of the kinds of farms and farmers I represent that understands the challenges that, that small businesses, families, and farmers in upstate New York face and how that, uh, and the challenges we face, how that resembles other rural communities across America. Uh, and so using all of that, that experience um, you know, in local government really you know, propelled me to want to serve at this level and to try to bring people together in a nonpartisan way to confront the challenges that face real people. So you were added to the House Agriculture Committee. Um, what are you hoping to accomplish by sitting on this committee? I wanted to serve on the House Ag Committee um, because it's it's known as a bipartisan committee, but it also uh, it, it, at this moment in time when we have to reauthorize ultimately the uh, uh, the Farm Bill, um, we, we are entrusted with ensuring that federal policy makes it easier for farmers. And by the way, that upstate farmers, like the ones I represent, have a seat at the table. We have some unique challenges, the environment, 
the economy, uh, natural resources, much different in the Northeast and in New York. And then the regulatory regime and the cost of living in the state of New York is very, very high. When you, come, when you, when you add all those things together, our farmers struggle pretty hard. And they, they needed a voice in Congress, and they need somebody who's going to work across the aisle uh, on the Ag Committee to try to move policy that helps them. Uh, I also, of course, uh, served uh, as a county executive. I grew up on food stamps, and the Ag Committee is responsible for ensuring uh, that uh, Americans who struggle hard have access to good quality nutritious food options. And so bringing that experience uh, to the committee, I think, uh, is important, but it's also why I wanted to serve on the Ag Committee and work with folks like G.T. Thompson uh, and others who understand the value and the importance of making sure uh, that farming and, far and farmers in America are successful. So kind of expanding on that a little bit further, what areas do you see need to be improved upon for the next farm bill? Yeah, well, you know, um, uh, we have an opportunity now, uh, although delayed, uh, to ensure that the kinds of farms and farmers I represent uh, get the resource and the support they need. So that means expanding some of the tools that they use uh, to address uh, climate resiliency. Uh, it means confronting small dairy farms and dairy margin coverage. It means ensuring that specialty crops have the same footing uh, in American agriculture policy as the large track uh, and big state farms. Uh, and for me, very importantly, uh, it means ensuring that people who want to enter agriculture as a lifestyle, as, an, as a job, and as an occupation have the support to do that. That means, uh, that means FFA and 4-H and, and uh, at, uh, at the K-12 level. It means uh, expanding Agra ability, which is a program meant to support those with disabilities entering into agriculture uh, as, a, as, as, as an occupation uh, and, and job. Uh, and it's ensuring that we break down barriers to protect uh, American farmers and farmland from those who, uh, uh, like China and others, who, who wish to gobble up uh, farm uh, uh, farm acres. And by the way, in states like New York that treat uh, you know solar fields uh, as uh, uh, on equal footing, we want to be sure that we're protecting uh, quality uh, uh, farmland and farming uh, from from that kind of development. So I want to get into conservation. Your bio says that you've been a lifelong champion for conservation, but currently your party would like to move around the Inflation Reduction Act funds that were allocated to conservation practices to other parts of the farm bill. Um, so what is your take on that? Yeah, I, listen, we have the capacity uh, to ensure that we're protecting natural resources and conserving those resources. We could do that through the farm bill, and certainly there need to be uh, dollars uh, there. And I've sponsored legislation and have been advocating uh, for increased uh, uh, funding uh, for the conservation uh, uh, title within the Farm Bill. And so there are going to be those who think that we should do something different. We're going to uh, continue to advocate to, uh, for, uh, in my case, upstate New York farmers. Uh, and that's the importance here. I, you know, I wasn't elected to tell a party line. I wasn't elected to simply do what somebody else asks. Uh, there are those of us who understand uh, the need uh, to address climate resiliency, to, uh, to ensure that uh, uh, we're protecting natural resources and supporting uh, not only farmers, but they but, but farmland and the resources they need. And so uh, I think we're going to be successful in doing that. I think we can find the right balance. Uh, and I think uh, having somebody who spent his entire life, you know, in New York, it's sort of uh, in our blood. We protect our resources because uh, it's, it's, in, it's important not only for today, but for future generations. And nobody wants to protect natural resources more than farmers. They get it. And so I think we can strike the right balance. How are you going about having those conversations with your colleagues? Yeah, we um, I we set forward when, when I became a member of Congress. We we established the staff and the commitment to be very earnest about legislating. And so we're engaged in bipartisan conversations. We co-sponsor legislation bipartisan way, uh, and we're trying uh, effectively to build the coalitions necessary to support uh, uh, the conservation title and the commitment to ensure that we're protecting natural resources and helping farmers confront climate resiliency. And I again, I think we're going to strike the right balance. Uh, but but most important. The Ag Committee is known for being bipartisan, and so I think we're going to find uh, a way to build the right coalition to, uh, to provide the right protections. So you also have a seat on the Transportation and Infrastructure and Small okay. Business Committees. Um, are there any areas you are hoping to cross-reference with priorities for farm policy? We learned uh, in glaring detail during uh, the COVID pandemic and economic shutdown, and those are two different things, COVID pandemic and then government's decision to shut things down. Uh, we knew and learned uh, about weaknesses in our supply chain. Serving on the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee, I can tell you that's a priority for us. Uh, but farmers, uh, 
uh, well, I should say consumers learned it firsthand and farmers knew it, that this weakness in our supply chain. So getting product from America's uh, farmers and farming uh, to, the, to the retail, uh, to the storefront, to the grocery store, to the market, uh, critically important. And that's, by the way, the balance that needs to be uh, reached. And, and where my work on TNI, the Transportation Infrastructure Committee, is, uh, is, a val is of importance uh, on ag and ag uh, uh, on TNI. And, and, and let's not forget, I mean, with farming, in particular in New York, with farming and agritourism being combined, the largest uh, industry in the state, these are all small businesses. Yes, many of them are family, uh, family farms. Those are f small family businesses that need the support of the federal government, need access to the resources, and need the government to respect the work, the work that they do. And by the way, I just would, would mention, we, we also learned that reliance on other nations for food is simply a mistake. And so making sure that, that, that our farmers are as productive and successful as possible is as much about food security as it is national security. And we learned all of this over the last several years. And so leveraging the work I do on, on these other committees to help farming and farmers is, is really a priority for me. So we've talked a lot about farm policy thus far. Let's uh, get to know what the congressman is and, and yeah. what he likes to do outside of work. So tell outside just start. Of work. Is there anything I <laughs> <laughs> to, to kick things off? Just tell me a little bit more about your family. Yeah, I'm the uh, proud uh, father of four uh, children, one of whom uh, lives with a disability. My wife, Corinne, and I uh, live in uh, beautiful upstate uh, uh, New York. Uh, uh, my wife's a preschool teacher. Uh, and um, you know, I just say we, we're like every other, uh, you know, sort of a, a ordinary uh, a New York family. You know, we get to the grocery store. We'll be the ones with the two carts because we've got four kids. We know that things are really expensive. We know that our our cereal boxes are half empty and they cost twice as much. These are the these are the, the things we we understand because we live it every day. Uh, and uh, you know, we uh, we very much are involved uh, uh, in our community because you know we think it's important to uh, to, to give back. And then in your spare time, <laughs> I know which I know is limited. What do you like to do? Yeah, well, um, I have I, I've mostly I, I will tell you, being a, a member of Congress, you struggle to to give enough time to your family, and I am just as much at fault as I am successful in trying to make sure uh, that my free time is with my kids. Um, I will tell you that uh, that uh, you know there there are times this place distracts you from those important things, and I get it. Uh, but uh, spending time with my boys and my daughter are really really the the priority for me. And when I have a few moments, uh, I'll get out uh, for a run uh, in uh, beautiful upstate New York in the, in the Catskill Mountains. And what's the ages of your kids? Oh, so thank you. My, so my daughter, uh, Abigail, born on the autism spectrum, lives with a seizure disorder. She's 19. Jack's 14. Elias is, uh, uh, is, is now uh, seven years old. And Theo is five years old. So they keep you on your toes. They keep my <laughs> wife on her toes. Uh, she is uh, to, uh, she's a very special lady, a superhero, and I do my best to be an adequate father and husband. But uh, you know that's always uh, a work in progress. Well, that's all we have time for today, Congressman. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thanks.